Okay, so we're recording. Welcome to the August monthly Wave 5 Trade Support Webinar. This is your chance to ask me questions about the Indicator Suite, um, for me to look at other things with you uh, and really sort of help you use the Indicator Suite and the strategy revolving around it. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to look at LUV on the 60 minute here. Now, we spotted this in the trade room earlier today. Trevor, it's in the um, it's it's in the membership area with all the other. Um, bear with me. Before we start, guys, those that haven't attend, uh, got the let's go go for it the. Um, elite training course it is available we've we've got over 30 people um, on this course at the moment I'm producing more and more videos for it so in the members area Trevor in the elite wave elite training course in stochastics both videos are there now okay so the stochastic trading strategy that's the main one and then underneath is the session that you attended the other day okay and that is in the stochastic training strategy on the membership site there let me put it in for you anyway and for those that haven't got this elite training course it is extremely good value i'm sure trevor and all the other guys that's got it will admit there is really, really good value with this. This takes your trading, use the indicator suite to the next level. So this is all video tutorials, the core wave five trade trading strategy, futures day trading strategy. I had a massive trade using this strategy today on oil. Uh, stochastic trading strategies, multiple time frame strategies and blending vesting strategies. So something for everybody there five great strategies there part of the elite training course and you can subscribe to it and i'll give you the link here um, it's on the same site as the scott stock scanner memberships 197 dollars uh, and this is taken from when i was live in chicago and we're adding videos to it all the time so it's like a live course if you like so that is the link there for the subscribe to the to the elite training course okay so let's have a look at this let me just re-isolate this now at these lows probably let's just go all the way back okay that good let's go back to this current low before the big move up where was I isolated? I can't remember now. I just put this on, literally. There it is. What I wanted to get with the so I just went left to I to isolate beyond the start of this trend because. The, the thing is, we've had a parabolic move up on this 60 minute and we've pulled back against it. When you spot these pullbacks on the charts, we know it's a wave four pullback. Why? The 535 oscillator is good. And again, the whole point of this is to remind you of how to do things like this. To measure it, we use the Fib extension. We go for the highest point on the oscillator during the wave three. We go to the zero, we click again. We go to the highest point on the oscillator on the wave three again and click for the third time for this Fib extension. Okay. Now, on IndyTrader, I can set up um, the template. So I'll just quickly do that now. Just template, load, oscillator pullback. Okay. Apply. And as you can see, the pullbacks between 90 and 140. Stochastics crossed over in the oversold zone. So all I did was go left, really, because of this parabolic move, we can't really go for the low there. So all I've done is just gone back left 
to just away from that trend. And then it automatically gives you the ABCs, the one, two, threes. The four is the important one to measure how that wave four is behaving. Now, this is pretty good, okay? This has pulled back, found support today into our amber zone. We are looking at holding that support. Now, it's not moving with these really bullish markets, which is a little concerning, uh, but this is when we talk about the entries here, and I do them on my daily videos, okay? But again, it's good during these webinars to look at this particular strategy. So this is what we call a nice tame wave four pullback on the 60 minute chart. Okay. Over two days, we're in the third day. Now we're finding support. We need it to start to move away. We've got to look for an entry. Now entry points have got to be outside the six, four moving average high. Okay. So for the next hour bar position, we are talking around about 57, 53, just there. Okay. However, as if this keeps going sideways a little bit and takes a while to move up, we could in fact lower this. I'll just leave it as blue for now. So on this current hour, this would be the entry above the 6-4 moving average high. Now, look at the price action on, on these hourly bars. Unless we get a really big move, that's not going to take us in. But again, this is where we'd be right now. So the next hour... You would bring it down to around about 57, we said about 57, 54, something like that, outside of the 6-4 moving average high. If it doesn't trigger then, the next hour we can bring it down because we've got no real support resistance zone in here. We've got a nice orderly wave for pullback. We can use each hour, that's that 6-4 um, moving average high as potential, just get it above it. As potential entry levels until you come down to this red green red okay I would advise if you get that sort of pattern which is called a green bar ignored you don't really want to be going any lower than that because that's a bearish signal for candlesticks so we just want to be you know the lowest sort of entry we're going to be is just over $57 57.14 there um, but that wouldn't be for one two for the next few hours Okay, so for me, this one is probably getting ready for tomorrow. C index is pushing up quite a lot now. And obviously, the, the stop loss will be just below the wave four, and then you work out your risk to reward. Does everybody remember how to work out the risk to reward, or do you want me to go through that as well? Just let me know. That's the point of this webinar. In the chat box, let me know. Go through it. Okay, so I'm going to put my, I'm just to save time, I'm not going to change these to red and green. I'm just going to put my stop loss and entry there. Okay, to work out the risk to reward, we've already got the automated target zone. We've got the wave four low. We've decided, you know, the, the stop loss is going to be a, about five cents below the wave four low. And we decided in a few hours, this would be sort of entry over 57.15. So we're going to use the FIB extension. We're going to click on the stop loss first. Then we're going to click on the entry price. Then we're going to leave it on the entry price. Just move it to the right a little bit there and click again. So what we're doing is extending. So this is one whole one. And then the FIB extensions are going to give us um, extensions of that one whole one, if you like. So I can go into properties here. Uh, let me go into the right one. Okay, I'm going to go to my template. I'm going to load up risk to reward with 2% and then I'll go through it. Okay, so what I've got on this is price levels for my extensions. 50%, which is half percent on the account balance if you're risking the one whole percent between stop loss and entry. I've got 160, 1.6. I've got 100, which is exactly one to one. And then 200, which is one to two. So we click OK there. And as we can see, we have a risk to reward of one to two into the target zone. OK, so let's go through this again. We spotted this potential long 
on the six minute time frame for LUV. Over the last two days, we've had a really orderly pullback on a wave four. Today, on this 60 minute time frame, in these first three hours, we've had the dip down, made the new wave four low, we've rejected those lows, and now we're going sideways. In theory, we're almost trying to start to move up. We've measured the 535, very important. It's between 90 and 140. The stochastics crossed over in the oversold zone. All the stars are aligning, okay? So now we've got to look for the entry. The entry's got to be outside the 6.4 moving average high. I've looked at the previous size of those hourly candles and it's probably very unlikely to move into and go through the 6.4 moving average high for the current candle position, for this current hour. The next hour would be at around about 57.46, and then three hours time, we're looking just over $57, 57.16. So we can adjust those if, we, if the price action starts to move up, it's starting to move higher now, look, okay? So we can actually adjust those accordingly, but we must have a minimum risk to reward of one to 1.6 into our target zone. If you are swing trading on 60 minutes or above, you need that sort of risk to reward ratio there. Otherwise, it's too low and it, the, the, the risk is too much because you are going to get losers and you will lose that 1%, but you need to be getting those winners of 1.6% and above on average if you can so to, to offset those losers, if you like. So again, Steve, does that does that answer your question there? I know you missed the start of it there. You've got the stop loss just below your wave four. You've got your entry, depending on um, which candle you're you're going to look to enter on and where we are now on the six four moving average high. And then we've got the risk to reward. So what I want to do right now is I'm just going to bring this is the Ninja Trader version. I'm just going to bring the TOS version over um, for futures. I'm going to go through a trade today now i'm not going to give too much away um, because this is covered on the stochastic and the futures trading course on the elite training course i know a lot of you have already got it but i just want to go through and show you this works very very well okay now you won't see it right now because um the it's moved away from here but we will go through the trade i did this morning okay so I isolated at the highs overnight. This is when I woke up. Okay, I start work about 7 a.m. European time. Okay, it's now 6.15 p.m. and I'm still working, I'm still trading. Okay, so when I woke up, this was a wave one. Okay, it's changed now. We've had a lot of price action. This is a five minute chart on CL. I allowed this to pull back and it found resistance at the wave two that was at the time at the yesterday's close and the pivot point. Now straight away, my potential stop loss is going to go there for the short and my entry is going to go there for the potential wave three move. It did trigger. We had the bearish bias. We had the false breakout dots on the bottom there looking very strong bearish. And then it let go and I took profit at 67.11, 52 ticks that trade was. It did go lower, but I was happy with 52 ticks, which is $520 per contract, okay? So then we've had the move higher now. We've bounced off those lows. And this is where we are right now on CL. We've had a really, really parabolic wave three, okay? So we've gone from the lows, we've got the wave three, we've hit the, the second pivot point. I mean, this has been a massive reversal for oil. So what we're looking for now, potentially, because we've got these false breakout dots on the top here, denoting a strong bullish trend, if this pulls back into this, this zone here, into this pivot point, into the green zone and find support, if the stochastic pulls back at the same time into the oversold zone and the 535 mar marries up, we could be looking for a potential long back up to this pivot point or slightly higher. At the moment, it doesn't look like it's got enough to pull back. 
But when you are day trading futures, this is what you've got to look for really, guys. This was a third wave trade, 52 ticks within five hours, whatever it was. Okay, great move. But then you've got to keep an eye on it. If we get a big move up here, okay, I mean, to be honest, there was a third wave move there, but we didn't get the stochastic green arrow, so I didn't trade it. Um, what we're looking for now, do we have another trade on oil on this, on this counter trend move? Uh, question on this, does the oscillator need to go red? Uh, it needs to pull back between 90 and 140%. So we could be getting a new wave three here, but then the highest point in the wave three on the oscillator is here at the moment. So you can just measure that. And again, go through how to do that again. So we want the tools, we want FIB extensions. We go to the highest point on the wave three. We go to the zero point. We go back to the highest point on the wave three. Okay. So now we we're looking for the oscillator to pull back between 90 and 140. So not necessarily has to go to red because sometimes we just touch zero and come back up again. But this has got a long way to go. We were just about to make a new wave three high. Um, but at the moment, I've drawn that in because this is the highest point on the oscillator for the wave three. So as long as this doesn't get broken here and we start to put, yeah, just, just printed a new wave three high now, you see. But the oscillator high point is still higher than this at the moment. This is really strong bullish. We'd prop, we'll be looking for a pullback against this at some stage. At the moment, it's still going along. But I've got my 9140 in there. Uh, and that's got to pull back against on the stochastic as well, but looking good. Just to look forward as well, guys, we are producing, uh, with the help of uh, Jerry, uh, who's one of my inner circle guys, we are producing an add-on, a futures day trading add-on to the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. Um, okay, brilliant, Steve. So this, um, these indicators here are part of the, the new day trading um, suite which will be launched in October and this cloud here so this is really really cool and this helped me with this short trade this morning okay why did it help me I got the red arrow to point down here okay red arrow here but I had red for short one two three four out of six lines here this was a strong short this morning and we were below this cloud as well. See how it came back, tested the cloud, came back down again, okay? Now we're above the cloud, the cloud is acting as support, and we would see on a wave four pullback, this cloud acting as support as well. So this is very cool, and we'll be launching in October. So very, very good for futures day trading this. But I don't like to launch anything new until um, we've tested it a lot. Okay, um, and this this is, will be for sale. It won't be uh, as part of your because like, at the moment it will just be for TOS. We will then pay for the money for to develop for other other platforms. Um, but this will be an add-on uh, at an extra cost because this would be purely day trading futures. So it will be in October and it probably launch and it, it looks like we, we're going to be around about $169 uh, one-off payment for this day trading futures and there'll be some uh, videos with it as well. Um, but at this moment in time, it looks like it's going to be that sort of price uh, and you will be able to download it from the new website when we launch the new website in October as well. Okay, so that answers your question, Stephen. Steve, sorry. I know my dad was called uh, named Stephen, but he hated being called Stephen. <laughs> Paul, the, the $97 is for the year subscription on the stocks uh, scanner membership. The elite training course is something totally different, okay? Uh, the elite training course is $197 one off. 
but they are so much in there, okay? There's, it's not just stocks, it's futures, it's multiple time frame strategies that can be used on all Forex futures and stocks. There's blend investing, there's stochastic trading strategies, futures trading strategies, a lot in there, totally different. Absolutely, yeah. I, I can say, I know Trevor's got it, I know Gary, Don, uh, Jerry. Um, I do run a trade room called Paul's Pre-Market Prep, Emil. Uh, every single day where we set up potential trades, we look at the futures as well. Um, I don't have the link for that at the moment. Please email me and I'll send you the link, okay? That's live every day, an hour before the markets open. It runs through the first 15 minutes of the session. And then from October, you'll get SMS messages alerting you to new ones or management. No problem. Just give me an email. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Right, we were going to look at, at a um, something for... It was George. You wanted to look at truncated wave five on um, on forex, George. Do you have an example of that? So I can just put it on. In the meantime, I will look at Wolfram um, cancel. Wolfram wanted to look at GBP Japanese Yen on monthly. Okay, that's a fall from grace. Let's have a look at these lows. Now, you may call it a truncated wave four. I might call it something else, you see. That's why I wanted to see an example, George, so we could see where we are. Um, Whoa, this is a tough one, um, Wolfram. Such a long time frame for um, for a forex pair. You've got to consider really now, even though I've isolated down at these lows, because it's broken the rules. You've got this triple bottom going off here. This is really annoying. Yeah, I think that's correct there. Let me just go back. Let me just, I'll tell you what, let me go all the way back up, but I think it'll be the same. I think we're bearish bias at the moment. So if we go from these highs back in 2007, okay, we are one, two, and we're looking to go short again through 120, okay? Now, if I go a lot all the way to here, you will still see we're bearish bias. We're going to the high here, and now we're looking to go short still. So going back all the way to 2007, it's still bearish bias looking for that wave three. But if we go to here, we can see we've had the one, two, the three, the four, and we are looking to go short on the fifth wave move. Is that what you were looking at, Wolf, from there? Longer term short on GBP Japanese yen. Okay, so we're now looking, you were look, probably looking for an entry. And I would go below this short here, this low here. So 14280, yeah. Longer term play on GBP Japanese yen. Not many people do this anymore. Oh, nice stop there. 157.26. Q 
risk reward looks good to me. Again, to do the risk reward, fib extension, go from stop loss to entry. Hang on a second, click on entry, move along, same entry point, click again. And then you just need to adjust your extensions there. Let me just go onto properties and put that in. Good risk to reward there, actually. Very good risk to reward there, Wolfram. That's a good spot. We are overall for the last 10 years bear, you know, bearish biased. We go from the recent high. We've got this wave four pullback over the last year. We are looking at technically to go short longer term. Below this low of May, I would go. Oh, still going, Jerry. Oh, through two pivot zones already. I bet an apple was above $206 today, something like that. Really, really fantastic. Our blend, Jerry's Park Main Circle, we've got, uh, I think we're up to 26 stocks and ETFs. And, he, and this, they were doing extremely well already, but this big move today, and obviously Apple's in that blend, uh, you are, it is making big money. Has it got there yet, Simon? I hadn't, I hadn't looked uh, just recently. Yes, earlier. Wow, okay. I, it was on a mission earlier, it really was. And to be honest, Apple and Tesla dragged everything up, I think. And then, and then that, uh, I don't know whether you've seen my core trading strategy, it's part of the Elliott, uh, Elite and, uh, Indicator Suite. It's all about um, herd mentality. Herd mentality took over today. After that massive gap down on all the indexes, it, all it took was some really good feeling about Apple, Tesla, a few others. That herd mentality took over. People started buying again. Really, really phenomenal. So GBP, Japanese yen, we're looking for that short there, fifth wave on the monthly, longer term. Uh, I mean, this could take a year or so to get down there, Wolfram, but I would say definitely bearish bias. Uh, if you are going to be trading GBP Japanese yen on any short time frames, you will be looking for those shorts, I would say. Okay. Just have a look. Uh, I'll just bring the index futures over on TOS. It is being recorded and it will go up on the blog, Steve. Absolutely. And Q, unbelievable. Let's just zoom out. So this is the overnight, overnight creep down below yesterday's low, the Trump effect. I call it TTT, Trump tariff tantrums. It's going to be a new futures contract. TTT, okay? Everybody ignored that, okay? As soon as Apple, Tesla and everything else came in, we've just been one way all day. We've had a shallow pullback. Shallow pullback, that wasn't a fifth wave move because we didn't get the 535 and um, the stochastic crossing over. See how we're all green now on our new indicator for the futures day trading. We've gone from red, red, red. This means it's in the cloud. And then all of a sudden, we're all green. Okay, so when we do get a pullback, we're looking for longs. Trumple Stiltskin, that's right, Jerry, yeah. Just wondering, Jerry, if this wave four on a three minute was um, any good. Let me just change that to a three minute. Whoops. Bear with me, guys.
Again, this strategy works on three and five minutes. I just don't have enough power to run all the platforms I run and on different time zones as well. I think so. Everybody ignores him now, Trevor. I just wish your um, institutional traders would ignore him as well. But that, that time will come. Just waiting for this to load up, NQ on the three minutes. Um, oil still going strong. Just takes a little time. I've got a very powerful computer, guys, but I've got TradeStation, NinjaTrader, Think or Swim, eSignal, uh, and lots of other stuff running on this as well. So it just takes a little bit of time. There we go. We're, in, we're coming in now. So let's just zoom in a little bit. I just want to look at it. This is a good, I think this is a good example, guys. It may not have come deep enough. It did come deep enough on the stochastic, but not on the... Trevor, I've got uh, a custom-built... Intel Core i7 something or other with a special graphics card with six ports um, 30 something of gig of RAM and all sorts of stuff. I'm having a, I'm getting a new one built right now as well and I'll be using 4k 43 inch TVs on that one as well um, So yeah, they're all custom built. Sorry guys, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to use this as an example when you're day trading, because you've got to be able to, um, you've got to be able to identify these pullbacks, but if they don't work on, a, on the five minute, for example, okay, go down to three minutes. The stochastic was good. The 535 still wasn't good at that time. So when you're pulling back into this zone on the five minute, go down to the three minute, maybe even the two minute. Have you got that stochastic crossing over? Have you got that 535 crossing over? If yes, I wouldn't go down to one minute. You've got an entry to go long. That'll work out. Don't just identify that five minute as the time frame. Go down to three, go down to two. If that's a pullback against an extremely strong parabolic move, it's a pullback, it's of some profit taking if you like, but it's going to find support. If it doesn't find the right entry criteria for your five minute, go down to three. If not, go down to two. If it doesn't get on the two, you just haven't got an entry. But you're day trading. You're looking on shorter time frames. Use those different time frames to spot those entries. I guarantee now, let's put it on two. Got a bit of time? Yes. Let's put it on two minutes. I mean, let's see if that actually did set us up. Because these are things you should be going through your mind when you are day trading futures. Trevor, I don't have the time, to be honest. With the inner circle trading strategy, which has 20, now 26 stocks and ETFs in the blend portfolio. Okay. Uh, there's about five other trades on there as well. With the day trading strategy on futures, the stocks day trading from the trade room, the daily swing trades, I just got no more time, honestly. What you need to find is the, the, the thing that works for you. All I do on my trading body is give you lots of resources there. Uh, okay, being in my trade room gives you more resources. Uh, obviously, you've got the elite training course that gives you more. Uh, you know, there's lots going off for you guys. I just, I. I simply cannot trade it all. I just don't have enough. I, I trade the European and the US session. Not many people do that. Okay. 
and I still haven't got enough time to trade unusual options activity. So let's move this along now. So this is the two minute, I just want to isolate this now. Sorry guys, I will get there. Just trying to zoom in, see where we are. A lot of computing power needed here. So the two minute we did we didn't get we did get a wave four. It hit the wave five and it's gone on to a new wave three. All I'm all I'm trying to do I here is identify that pullback on here on the two minute. Okay. We the wave five's hit target and gone beyond and now turned into a wave three. But on the two minute you can see the 535 crown between 90 and 140. We got the pullback in the oscillate, in the, um, in the stochastic. Yeah, absolutely. So I've gone down to the three minute to the two minute. That wave four pullback at the time on the two minute, we got the, the 9140, we got the stochastic crossover. We got a great entry on the two minute there. It hit the wave five target and smashed through it. And it's gone that long now. It's turned back into a wave three. Okay. So this is a great example when you're day trading futures using this indicator suite. Don't just stick to that one strategy. Look at the three. Look at the two minute as well. When you get a really strong parabolic move on the five minute, that pullback may not be deep enough. Okay. To give you that entry. But if you've got that three minute and that two minute option to look and right here is absolutely sweet spot on the, the 535 and the stochastic and it's gone straight back and given those false spark breakouts on the top there. This is a prime example. You've got to use multiple time frames. And again, this is why I put that elite training course together. Multiple time frame strategy is extremely important. Yeah, we'll have a look at ES now. Um, let me just put this back on five minute and let it do its calculator and then we'll go to ES. Okay, so let me just put ES up now. Restore cells. Let's go to ES. Okay, so we're from the lows of today. Again, this was this was a great short earlier okay stochastic short coming down here before the session opened great short through here okay through the through this wave three boom down that was a stochastic strategy not the wave five strategy now we've got these lows this is where the wave counts come from steve again we've had a shallow wave four you go to the two minute that would have been a perfect one and you would have traded this move up here so where we are right now, what we're looking for is we haven't reached yesterday's highs yet. But as soon as this gets longer than this wave three, this will be reprinted a wave three and you'll be looking for a pullback against that. OK, yeah, perfect. Did you trade this short or the long? Did you trade this short early on or did you go? Did you go on the long here? The long. Perfect. Great trade. Well done. What you'll be looking for now, if you've taken profit, which you should have done because not many people let it ride that far. <laughs> what you're looking for now is a pullback. Okay. Now, if this pullback stops at this wave five and it comes back here to a 14.5, yeah, at the, uh, at the pivot level, good, good choice at the wave five target. Perfect trade, Steve. Well done. This is working out for you. And if you are really doing well from this, go on the website on wave5trade.com underneath the TOS version. Put some comments in there, guys. If Whichever version you've got, if you're having some really good, great results and brilliant trades like this, 
put a screenshot in there uh, just put some great comments I really really appreciate this because this you know what I've taken on a partner and this is this is going to go big really it will okay no problem but this is obviously working for you okay guys we've got 15 minutes left uh, I'd like to uh, get you to ask me some questions and so I can answer them, maybe look at some tickers. Okay, Paul, how do I save the setting on a stock when I set the wave five trade? When I, when I move another stock, go back. I, I'm afraid on TradeStation, you can't change it. Uh, you can't save it. All you can do on TradeStation, like I do on, um, no, you can't on TOS either, you can't. The only thing you can do, let me just close this down a little bit. Move that out of the way. The way I've overcome that, because you can't on, um, on NinjaTrader, what I do is open a new tab for each stock, okay? So this, this one is fossil. Okay, I, I just need to do the wave count again. Everything else is still there, my entry, blah, blah, blah. I just need to go and isolate the wave count again. Okay, now this is something that we can't do at the moment because we are bound by what the TradeStation or NinjaTrader platform allows or TOS, okay? Uh, it's something in the new year when we get a new, because we're going to actually get a development team together to see if we can do something uh, which uh, saves that wave count. Okay. Uh, you can get a longer wave count by just going back. So if we look at Tiva, Trevor wants us to look at Tiva and we'll look at that as an example here. Okay. Depends on the data set you've got. At the moment, I'm on the daily, and if I go to the data series, that's looking back a year, okay? I can put that back a thousand days, if you like. So the, the data series is the, is the important thing here. I've gone back a thousand days, okay? And what I can do, I can go to the high way back then and I can isolate the bar count. Whoops, hang on. So I can go back where, how long I really want to. You can go back 10 years if you want to, okay? And it shows you the longer term trend where we're in right now, okay? And so on Tiva, going back a thousand days to those highs, we've had a really strong bearish move. We've pulled back against there. So longer term, this is where we are right now on Tiva. Maybe looking for a short here. Now, does that make sense, Steve? So it depends on the data series you've got. If you want to have a look at a longer term view of a stock, you can change this to weekly. For example, we can go for the data series on the weekly. That gives you a really good longer term view. 1,825 days. Okay, let's go for 5,000. Whoops. 5,000. This is the weekly. Let it do its thing, okay? So we've had a strong bullish move up, started with the high, and then we're on this bearish move down on the weekly on TIBA. So even if I go to these lows here 5,000 days ago, okay, we can see that bullish trend or trends within there, okay? Now, really, we want to go to this high, Okay, we talk a lot. I talk a lot about this uh, part of the blend investing and the multiple time frame strategy in uh, the elite training course.
Okay, no problem. So on the weekly on Tiva from those highs back July 24 last year, we've got this pullback now when we're looking to go short. Okay, Trevor, what was you what time frame was you looking at? So overall we're bearish bias. Take your time, Steve. Take your time. Um, the, the thing is, you can't, you can't hit it overnight, okay? Crude oil has just shot through the roof, guys. Sorry, just saw that on one of my screens. Absolutely shot through the roof. Steve, take your time, okay? I developed this strategy over six years. I've been trading it now 14 um, in total. Uh, and I'm still developing strategies within strategies, okay? It takes time to learn. It takes time to build confidence. Uh, you can't do it overnight. I, I wish it was get rich quick, this trading malarkey, but it's not. It takes time, and it takes a lot of pain sometimes as well. Thanks, Stephen. Took a lot of work, I must admit. So let's have a look at Tiva on the daily now. I don't think we're looking for a long, we, I mean, we are bullish bias in this current trend, but this move today, was this on earnings? Okay, great. Steve, yeah, share it with them once you once you get used to it. Share it with those guys because I I know they will benefit. Wow, this was a big move today, Trevor. Big move today. This was this on earnings, Trevor. Yeah. Obviously, that when the day closes today and you go to tomorrow morning, this will be the new wave for low. Okay. Uh, and, and to be honest, it looks like if this is a poor earnings reaction, in theory, we could uh, come down and break this wave for rule, and it could be stopped. We could start a bearish trend. So I wouldn't be interested in the long. The only long I would be interested in is if it closed the gap and went through there, but then you've got no risk to reward. So there's no trade for me there, Trevor. What you will be looking for in reality for me is if this comes and breaks down below this red zone, re-isolate at the highs here, okay? If it does, because then you'll be looking at a bearish move, if that makes sense. Sixty minute chart on Tiva. Oh, look. Again, I need to sort out the data set on this. I need sixty days for me on sixty minutes. So we need we see the earnings reaction today. It does seem to be holding support at the moment, but for me, that's a bearish flag. Yeah. I'll be looking to short this. If I was trading this type of strategy, if we get this range now at the bottom of this gap down, we're looking at a bearish flag, guys. This is nothing to do with wave five trade. This is basic um, pattern recognition and trading those bear flags after earnings reactions. So for me, if I was trading this, and I may do tomorrow, but again, if I'm very strong bullish, I don't go any, I don't look at any shorts on the short time frame. But here we've got a bearish pennant forming. And what we're looking for is these, this to contract in both volume 
and in price action. So let's just pull the volume up here, guys. Quick lesson on this type of pattern. Okay, we've got the first move down, big volume. You see how the volume's contracting each hour? This is good. We need that contraction to continue. We need the price action to contract as well. So in theory, what we get, in theory, because we're a long way from that at the moment, uh, we get this sort of formation. So we get a contraction in price action, so we don't go any higher. We don't go any lower and we get this triangle form. We get a contraction in volume. This is a good breakout strategy. So if this continues into today's session like this, tomorrow you would be looking, it's a bearish pattern, you'd be looking to go short. Okay. So after the earnings reaction today, I would be inclined to go short. But let's see how this forms for the rest of the session. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to call it a day there. We've had a great uh, webinar today. We've looked at futures, stocks, longer term Forex. Um, just to remind you guys, if you haven't got the elite training course, okay, which is basically me. Uh, with five strong strategies using the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. Let me just load this up. So you need, you can go from there to our stock scanner membership from the main website. This is our stock scanner membership. In the members area, even if you're not a member of the stock scanner membership, you can go to a elite elite training course and you can subscribe there. Okay, and in the elite training course, you have the core Wave 5 trading strategy, Wave 5 trade futures day trading strategy, and in there is the main lesson video and a follow-up session which was recorded live with guys that have got the course already looking at and asking me questions and going through further examples. Okay, uh, that now then there's a stochastic multiple time frame strategy and blend investing. Okay, and if you haven't already, you can subscribe here. And I do have a live session for the multiple time frame strategy penciled in for in the, in the next two weeks as well. So if you do buy it, you'll be able to attend that live session as well. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Let me just stop the recording.